Good morning. Hope you're doing well. It is still morning for the next four minutes, isn't it? Hope you're doing good today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to give it just a moment for us to share uh, this video as we have went live here and uh, let some folks hop on. And I've uh, been an interesting morning here as we have gotten today. school Thank going. So Apologize about that. My phone. I'm trying to share it from my phone and uh, looks like I have uh, sound still on my, my phone here. So I uh, appreciate you get on here with us today. I know some will watch this a little bit later on, and that is okay. We understand that. Um, and I uh, just want to give you a few quick things um, this morning as we are uh, still new, I would say, into the new year, uh, 2022, just 10 days old. And uh, some folks are loving how their year is going. Others maybe not so much. Uh, I know as far as us as a church, we're experiencing a great wave of revival right now. And things that are happening uh, in the local church, we, we hate we had to shut down last weekend for sickness, but thankfully uh, people are getting well again and we're excited for that, praying for those uh, that are still sick and under the weather. Uh, I'm gonna give you three things to subtract from your life that'll add faith or will add to your faith in 2022. Have you ever uh, have you ever went on a trip, maybe a short vacation, or been away for the holidays, and you realize, you know what, Seth, you've packed too much stuff. <laughs> Some shirts they they never left the bag, you know. You brought three toothbrushes just in case. You you packed all the charging cables that you own for the twelve devices that you brought along. You even brought some of the wrong ones, you know. You brought some things like shoes that you didn't have an occasion for, snacks that never were eaten, um, or, you know, your dog, you wouldn't leave home with a sitter, you know. Packing for a trip is very important, and so is taking the right items and the right number of items for the right reasons. It can make or break a trip. I want us to pretend for a minute that 2022 is like going on an extended trip. We want to pack the right things. Take nothing with us that might only slow us down, waste our energy or our time, or worse yet, cause us to regret taking the trip entirely. And so I'm going to give you three things to subtract from your life of 2022 that will help you on the journey and add to your faith as you navigate this new year. The first thing I want to tell you is unpack the useless. Have you ever gone through the drawer by your bedside? My wife, uh, we, we've kind of had some sickness in our home this week, and uh, she got to feeling better on Thursday. And I knew, you know how I know she was feeling better? She started really, really getting focused on, I'm cleaning this house, I'm doing this, that, and the other. And uh, then she tackles our bedroom, and, and she goes in there, and she looks, and she says, you know what, it's even time to go through drawers. And we go by the bedside, and I start rummaging through my drawer and kind of looking at things, and like, where did this come from? What, what's this from? Have you ever, maybe you went through the center console in your car. Or you sifted through some clothes only to realize that you've been past, you know, some items for a long time. You've been passing them in your closet with no intent of wearing them. We all do it, don't we? We all have that junk drawer, I guess. You couldn't make an accurate list of items in those places with a million dollars on the line, could you? <laughs> you have no clue how it all got there. They're just there. And you haven't had the initiative to remove them. You're never going to wear that shirt or use that extra USB cord. And let's be honest, you have some gift cards laying around that you've probably already used and forgotten about, but there they sit, ticking up space. We have uh, useless stuff in our lives as well that we just continue to pass by. They may be physical objects that we'll never use, like the ones mentioned above, or commitments to meetings and people uh, that we should have never said yes to. The problem we're really talking about is are uh, trying to fill the space in our lives. For most people, an empty spot means useless. So we fill the drawers, the glove boxes, the calendar. We fill our bellies and our minds thinking that empty is the enemy of happiness. Whatever it is, they take up space in our drawers, space on our calendars, and space in our minds. And worst of all, they take up the space that could be meant for something truly more valuable space itself. And so as Christians, we're taught an unfamiliar word in our culture, and it's called contentment. 
It's the attitude that what we have is enough. And for Christians, Christ is the ultimate enough in a culture of more. Being known and loved by Him and knowing and loving Him in return allows for us to remove anything that doesn't suit that purpose or simply leaves gaps and space to discover new ways to know and love Him more. And so I want you to ask yourself this question, what space can I give back to God if I got rid of and you fill in the blank? 1 Timothy 6 says, Now there's great gain in godliness with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. So number one, I want to tell you, subtract the useless. Number two, give up the guilt. If you've ever carried something for far uh, longer than you wanted to, uh, but you just can't seem to put it down and walk away, you know what baggage is like. Okay, It's the weight of a burden that you'd like so much to leave behind and that you may even know that you should, but you pick it up and you travel anyways. And the travel is slow and difficult. You bump into people and objects along the way. You're easily tired and don't get very far before you need to rest. In your worst moments, you swing it at others like weapons. <laughs> this is what untreated guilt does to us. It slows you. It halts your joy. It kills the gratitude of the God who took it away. It hovers over us as a judge, behind us as an accuser, and in front of us as a bully. And for Christians, guilt has truly been, it's been dealt with. It doesn't mean that we won't sin and harm ourselves or others from time to time and that we don't have to ask for forgiveness. But what it does mean is that guilt no longer gets a bulky portion in our pack. We, we don't have to let it make the journey with us unless we pick it up by the side of the road and decide to toss it in, you know? Uh, what we can do instead is to confess that guilt to the Lord where he is eager and willing to forgive us so that we can once again get our focus upon him. And 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Psalm 103 verse 12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Thirdly, I want to say this today, pick your people. Where you pack things is of great importance when you have limited space. Everything should have a place, and not everything can or should be easily accessible. You know, your often used important items should be within easy reach without much effort so that you can access them as easily as possible. To extend this packing metaphor to its end, hopefully, the people in your life need to be in the right place in your life. Not everyone should have easy access to your time, your energy, decisions, family, or values. If you're a Christian, there needs to be people with easy reach in order to help you stay on track being Christ-like. Help arranging your priorities, holding you accountable, even being able to tell you sometimes you need to be able to look you in the eye and say you're being a jerk. If you're a Christian, these people should hopefully be other other Christians or even more mature Christians than you are. And this may be challenging to hear, but your inner circle of influence should not have any non-Christians in it. I said it today, and I don't mean that to be ugly. That doesn't mean we don't associate ourselves with non-believers, but rather we don't seek out their advice and guidance to help shape our values. But rather, we all of, all of these things, our values, our future, our lifestyle, how we view the world... All of these things need to be shaped ultimately by Jesus Christ and those who are willing and able to point us back to Christ. So ask yourself this question today. How would my life change if so-and-so was no longer a big influence on me? Go through those influences in your life. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with, un with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? 1 John 2.15 records, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know, it often feels so much better to subtract from our lives because almost all of us feel overwhelmed, burnt out, or just plain stuck. We all probably uh, have a list of what we could give up if we could. There are lots of things out of our control, so we have to be sure to take control of the things that we can and that we have a say in. You don't have to overload yourself and carry the heavy burden of guilt or allow certain people to be a major influence in your life. 
maybe the best thing you can do is go into 2020 with a confidence to remove what shouldn't have been there in the first place and let it be replaced with something better from God. I hope you have a great new year and that it's lighter and that it's uh, more full of the joy of Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And uh, don't forget Harvest Church. We don't have prayer in person tomorrow night. Pray in your homes. But we are joining together Wednesday night for midweek Bible study again at the building. Thank you so much for being with us today. God bless you.